To move ahead in a crisis, we will need to anticipate and plan. But to do that, we need to know where we want to go. Anticipating and planning is the strategic framework of crisis resource management. The importance of strategy can be illustrated by a famous scene from Alice in Wonderland. Alice is looking for directions and encounters a Cheshire cat. She asks, would you tell me please which way I ought to go from here? The Cheshire cat replies, that depends a good deal on where you want to get to. Alice responds, I don't much care where. And then the cat tells Alice, then it doesn't matter which way you go. Similarly, resuscitating a trauma victim to the point at which they can move from the emergency room to the operating room for further interventions will require planning for a future state. Imagine a scenario in which your best laid plans didn't work out. In our world, a plan A that crumbles could represent a missed intubation, forgetting to establish leadership, the failure to progress in pregnancy at the time of delivery, or the inability to defibrillate a shockable rhythm. By asking, what's my plan B, we can propose new solutions for our team, such as using a laryngeal mask airway, calling for help, proceeding with a cesarean section, or administering a drug such as amiodarone. The development of a plan B, or even a plan C, helps us move away from tunnel vision, where we may be fixated on how to do something. Simply put, having multiple plans removes blinders. Check out this scene from our crisis scenario in which contingency planning is demonstrated. Sats are dropping, high 80s. Sats are dropping. We might need to intubate now. I need to call my attending. Right. I'm gonna need your help on this one in the trauma bay. There's blood in the airway with sats dropping. I'm going to proceed, but you need to know my backup is on the way. Right. Yes, I have the video scope. Okay. Thank you. Bye. My attending is on the way, but we'll keep moving so we don't lose ground. Uh, just a second. Brian, we're about to intubate. I may need you for surgical airway as backup, if that's reasonable. Okay, got it. What if you have to take care of a patient who has a potentially difficult airway? An airway compromise is imminent. At this moment, you need to decide whether or not it's safe to transport the patient to the OR. What would you do? What's your plan B? Watch this scene from our crisis scenario for another example of an anesthesia resident who's anticipating and planning and consequently demonstrating situational awareness to a surgical attending. His airway is getting pretty bloody. But wow, it's not just his tongue that's swollen, his eyes and face too, plus his arm. Could this be an allergic reaction? Is that Oneg you're running? Maybe he got a bug bite and that's what the arm swelling is from? He was outside climbing a tree. Do you think we should stop the blood and run Epi? Well, he's looked like that before he started the blood. He definitely needs the blood. He's, his pressure has not been stable. We need to get up to the OR. Maybe we should intubate once we're there. We have more tools. Hi, right, Brian. I'm not sure we should transport him. It's a long way to the OR. His saturation is barely holding at 90%. Transport can be risky because his airway is tenuous. We could lose along the way and enacting a plan B in the elevator won't be pretty. I think we need to secure airway before transport. My attending is on the way down here for additional support. Okay, I'm setting up for surgical airway as plan B. I agree, let's stabilize the airway. As we envision a future state, we need to recognize that there will be barriers that potentially prevent us from going where we wanna go. If we wanna transport a patient from the emergency room to the operating room, our challenge in crisis resource management is to anticipate those barriers, such as inadequate blood supply, unavailable staff, or the inability to transport. Each of these barriers has the potential to slow our journey down to a future state. Sometimes these barriers can come in the form of our own biases, which we discussed in section two. Watch this scene from our crisis scenario. The surgeon assumes that the patient's clinical status can be explained by bleeding. Can you identify the potential bias? 
What else could we be missing? I had a patient like this once with a bad liver lack. He bled to death because we couldn't get into the OR fast enough. I don't know, enough. the abdomen looks the same, but ventilation is getting harder and stats are dropping. I can't hear breath sounds. You can't hear breath sounds. I still can't hear. Here, can you listen? He's bleeding everywhere. He's probably bleeding in his chest too. Shoot, we forgot to wait for x-ray. Probably needs a chest tube. That other patient also had a liter of blood in his chest when we opened. I hear breath sounds, but it's tight, wheezing everywhere. Could he be having an allergic reaction to the meds? Yes, look at his face and his hand. It's way worse. Shoot, I forgot about the hand. Could be anaphylaxis. Do we have any epi on us? Yes, I, I brought code meds. How much do you want? Uh, do we all agree that we should try some epi? Makes sense with ventilation and airway. Yes, look at his uh, face. Not sure, but it won't hurt. Okay, Diane, please give epi right away. In our crisis scenario, it's possible that the surgeon may have an availability bias that formed from his past experiences. We'd like to build on a few cognitive debiasing strategies we've already discussed. In addition to familiarizing yourself with cognitive biases and calling for help, identifying a worst case scenario or ruling out the most dangerous diagnosis is a cognitive debiasing strategy that forces consideration of an alternative diagnosis or a plan B. It can prevent the acceptance of a diagnosis before it's been verified. Ruling out the worst case scenario or ROWS, however, relies on our ability to recognize patterns and our predisposition to availability bias. It's important to remember that there can be many worst case scenarios. Limiting crisis management to only one worst case scenario may predispose us to a fixation error or provide a false sense of security if the scenario is not encountered. Instead of ruling out a worst case scenario, we suggest ruling out several worst case scenarios. In addition to asking yourself and your team, what is the worst case scenario? Ask, what else could this be? We ourselves can also be our own barriers to moving ahead. As we've discussed, individual factors such as cognitive biases, how we think, and expertise level can all impact our performance. We need to limit our cognitive load and balance our attention to successfully anticipate and plan to achieve situational awareness.